Before you start sewing, you have to understand how to correctly use a thimble. Now, why is this so important? Because if you're trying to become a professional tailor, you want to be able to trust your hands. And what I mean by that is you have to adapt a technique that allows your hands to make consistent movements and therefore make it easier for you to speed up your sewing over time, to make your stitches accurate, and also to make your stitches consistent so that every time you're making the same movement again and again. Now, what we use in tailoring is an open-end thimble. And the reason we use an open-end thimble is because we don't use the top of the thimble. We use the front of the thimble. Now, why do we use the front of the thimble? Well, because we're going to be sewing with this needle and we're going to be pushing this needle through many layers of fabric and that is going to put pressure on our finger. Now, when we put pressure on our finger, it better has to be in the same direction as our joint movement than against it. So we're not going to use the, th the side of the thimble to push because we're going to be working against our joints. And you can imagine that if you put pressure on your joints in the wrong direction over time, your fingers are going to start shaking, your hands are going to start shaking, and your fingers get distorted, and it's not a pleasant thing to experience. So, the first thing you need to do is to find an open-end thimble. If you can't find one, you can practice with a closed-end thimble, but I would advise to find one as quickly as you can. Then, it's how the thimble fits. Now, choose a thimble that when you put it on, it only allows the tip of your finger, your middle finger that is, to show through. You don't want the thimble to end up here or for it to be so tight that only the tip of your finger goes in because at that point you're struggling more with keeping the thimble in the right place than to actually focus on the sewing. Now also some of the cheaper thimbles don't have, um, well they haven't used nice metals and so when you're sewing as you're sweating your finger or the tip of your finger turns green or black and it looks disgusting. So what you can do if you have one of those cheap thin metal thimbles is to put some transparent nail polish on the inside and that will prevent the oxidation to happen and uh, also it gives you a better grip. Now you can also just ever so slightly crush the thimble so that it becomes a bit more oval, so that it fits your finger better. Now, having gone through that, it's now time to see how to use a thimble. If you've never used a thimble, it's gonna feel awkward and it's gonna hurt in the beginning. But as you practice with patience, you get used to it and at some point you're not gonna feel it anymore. So what's the first exercise? The first exercise is to put the thimble on, then pull all your fingers back, as far as you can until the fingers hit the base or the finger touches itself. And I know that sounds bad, but uh, once you get to that point, your the back of your hand should be straight like so, and you have this square shape on the top. So do that a couple of times. Pull your fingers back, hold it a few seconds, let go. Pull them back, hold them a few seconds, let go. Once you get used to that, bring your index finger and your thumb together and pull your middle finger back and focus purely on that. Hold a few seconds, let go. Pull back, hold a few seconds, let go. So by the time you are finished with this practice, you should be able to bend your finger so that the thimble touches your finger like this. Please don't tie up your finger. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Just push it back, pull it back consciously push it against itself and do this as many times as you need in order to be aware of the movement that you're making. If you're tying up your finger, you let the string or elastic band or tape to do the work for you and it's just not going to be a conscious process. So whatever you do, do it consciously because that way it stays in your mind. So we've done this, we've done that, we're now used to pulling our finger back. The next thing is to hold the needle correctly because there is a correct way and an incorrect way. The incorrect way is if you're holding it like so and you're 
putting it into fabric and when it's in the fabric you then let go and you push with your thimble through. That is not correct. It's not efficient and it doesn't allow for consistent stitches. What you ought to be doing is the following. If you're right-handed, imagine that you're approaching the needle from the right and you want to pick up the needle. But before you pick it up, flip your hand over while your fingers are still on the board and then hold the needle. Now, obviously, you're not going to pick up the needle every time like so, because that's just ridiculous. But what I'm trying to communicate here is that you have to go around the thimble and grab it like that. And the best way I can describe that is it's as if you're approaching it from here and you're flipping your hand over and you're holding it up, picking it up like that. Picking it up like that. Now, why like this? Because if you are picking up the needle like so, what's going to happen is the needle is going to be automatically aligned horizontally with your finger and with your board. Why is this important? Once you are used to picking up the needle so that every time you pick it up, it's aligned horizontally with the board or the floor or this line of your finger here, what you'll then are going to be doing is pull your finger back so that the thimble slides alongside the needle as you're pulling it back. And then once you've reached the farthest point, the needle is going to be aligned vertically now, like so. So that allows you to align the needle to the correct position, like that. Once you're done practicing that, and I advise you to practice this at least 50 times, when you're pulling this back, the next thing you have to do is to go forward and go backwards. Go forwards, go backwards. Go forwards, go backwards. Then you go from right to left from right to left, from right to left. And you do this to activate all these muscles around here so that every time you're picking up the needle, you're not struggling with positioning it in front of the thimble because that's going to be the next step. Once you pick up the needle from the board and you've aligned it vertically, you then are going to position the needle right in the middle in front of the thimble. So if I don't have my thimble on, it's going to be in the middle of my nail. Once you position the needle on the thimble like so, you go into lock position. So that means you don't take the needle off the thimble anymore. So that's that. Pick up, pull back, align, lock. That's the one movement that you need to master. The next thing is going to do, what you're going to do is to push the needle forward like so. So pick up, align, push forward like that and just be conscious of the strength of your middle finger pushing that needle through okay so that's one motion that you need to master then the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to sew and practice with a piece of fabric now imagine you pick up a piece of fabric and you have gone in lock position like so what you're then going to do is you're going to put the needle onto the fabric, push a little bit, and as soon as your, as your middle finger feels the tip of the needle, you're going to make a slight upwards motion like that. And you, by that, by doing that, you're lifting up the fabric ever so slightly, like so. Once you've lift up the fabric, without letting go of the needle, so the needle stays on the thimble, you're going to push all the way through, like so. You're going to Pick it up at the very tip, not from here, but at the very tip, and you're going to pull, and you're going to align, and lock again. So push, as soon as you feel the tip of the needle, upwards movement, push the needle through all the way without letting it go, then pick up the needle from the very tip, pull, pull back, align, lock. That's the movement. So doing it slowly is going to be like this. So now you know how to sew with a thimble and how to hold the needle correctly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew with some thread. And we are, when we are sewing with some thread, what we need to do is to know how to regulate the tension.
of that thread. So let's take a piece of thread. It doesn't need to be that long. You can double the thread, like so. So you've learned the movement. You're going to go through the fabric, you're going to push, and you're going to pull. Now, the majority of you who haven't used the thimble are automatically going to grip the thread like that, and then they're going to pull. Wrong. This doesn't allow you to have the same amount of tension over and over again, because this is not really very sensitive. There's too much power in this. You can just pull this, and you very easily pull this too tight. So what you need to do is the following. You put the needle in, and you push it through, and as you pick it up, you're going to bring your ring finger over the thread, and you're going to bring your pink finger under the thread, and as you lift up your pink finger, it's going to pull the thread. And that's how you regulate the tension. So, again, ring finger over, pink finger under, and you pull. That's it. So doing it slowly is going to look like this. And that's how you use a needle and a thimble correctly. By the time that you've mastered this, you can rely on your technique. Please do not rush this. You can practice this while you're watching TV or you're sitting in the tube. As long as you have a needle, a thimble and a piece of thread, you can sew through your trousers and just practice this movement. If you practice this movement and it becomes second nature, when you get to sew complicated things, you don't need to think about how you're using the th thimble and the needle and how you're sewing and what exactly you're doing. You can just focus on the work and not on the movement. That's how you use a thimble and now you know how to do it.